All right, so welcome everyone. Welcome to our Best of Evo, but we're under computer assisted language learning intersection, which is um, TESOL. And uh, it's really, really exciting to um, be part of this. What's um, even more exciting this year is the fact that it's completely free. In other words, uh, TESOL is providing um, the computer assisted language learning intersection with um, the ability to share this and everyone can join completely free. The best of Evo for 2022. We had our first session as uh, was mentioned earlier this morning. So this is our second session and the end of our sessions for today. Uh, we're going to go through three um, EVO sessions for 2022. They're all on a Moodle site. The first one is um, technology for spoken English. And we've got four presenters and they're all here. The idea of um, teaching or tools for spoken English originated from one of the presenters. There's a little bit about us. I'm not going to go through that. And that is Sushita. So I'm going to start with you, Sushita, since um, you came up with the idea. But strangely enough, at the same time, Ajita also had the idea. So they actually, this started last year, they both, which I think is interesting, they both um, sent a proposal for this. One was lost, Ajita's was lost. I don't know if you remember that, um, but uh, Sushita's was the one that we used. And it was a very, very collaborative process. And I think that's what's one of the great things about Evo is that not only do we connect with educators from the world, the world and learn together, but the preparation of these sessions is um, amazing. And we learn so much from one another because generally the moderators are from around the world. Um, Sushita, you can uh, unmute yourself at any time and add anything to your bio if there's anything missing or if things have changed. Basically, um, Sushita is coming to us from India. She's had 17 years, correct me if that's now 18 um, years and three years experience as SARP. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the acronyms that we're not familiar with, Sushita, as you tell us about your um, bio. Can you do that? Yeah, thank you and good evening or good afternoon wherever you are. And it's nice being over here. And uh, I thank EVO platform for giving us or providing us this opportunity to interact with new people and the teacher and uh, be the part of the teacher community. Yes, I won't take much time. <clears throat> so this is basically me. I'm a high school teacher. Uh, and since last five years, I've been <clears throat> working as state academic resource person specifically for English and uh, have been trained and uh, selected by British Council for their various projects uh, in Maharashtra, India. So apart from being the uh, resource person for English, I uh, maintained my CPD and uh, had uh, done very much uh, various experiments or uh, uh, with my mentoring and uh, uh, I have done two EVO sessions here. The first one is the uh, technology for spoken English, and the other one also with Nelly Ma'am, which is uh, which has to come just next to this one. So yes, uh, this is me. I have done the mentoring in the guidance of Richard Schmitzer, and I was the part of uh, EVO uh, this uh, this year uh, in his session as a moderator, classroom-based action research. Uh, laid by Ruby <clears throat> and Mariana. So yes, EVO is expanding my uh, learning. 
Yes, that is all from my side. This is my bio. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to go to Sudarshana, who um, has a few. She's actually moderating, If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Sudarshana, three uh, Evo sessions this year, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, she's very hardworking, <laughs> that I can say, and um, very passionate about learning. So, um, Sudarshana, maybe you can tell us a bit about you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my honor that I'm the part of the CVO session. And it's my second uh, experience. Last year also, I have moderated the same session, Technology for Spoken English. But last year, I'm not much confidence. But uh, uh, as Nelly Ma'am has trained me, and this year, uh, I was uh, really confident and enjoyed this session very much. I'm a primary teacher in government school and uh, I have uh, passed my master's and I work as a tech coordinator in British Council project uh, called as Tejas. I also uh, working as a MOOC coordinator in my uh, district and uh, I have uh, moderated the session technology for spoken English. Uh, I have moderated week uh, second where I we have introduced the seven uh, technology tools for uh, teachers. Uh, both for uh, primary and secondary teachers and these tools are uh, very fantastic and uh, these tools are useful for uh, learners in their schools. The teachers have enjoyed all the tools and they implemented their tools and uh, given their feedback in our forum also. I have enjoyed my learning with all participants and uh, enjoyed your session very much. So thank you very much from my side. Thank you. And um, Ashita, can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, ma'am. And uh, this is Ajita. I'm also from India. And like Sudarshana, I'm also a primary teacher working in a rural area. Uh, I have a, a sort of uh, like innovative teachers and trying so many ideas as I am working with the young learners because I uh, this English language is a second language for uh, the learners and it's quite difficult to learn speaking skill. So for development of speaking skill is the idea of the main idea of the T4AC for, uh, course. Actually, I have missed my uh, for very, the very first uh, mails and some meetings also. So I was about to miss the EVO platform, but uh, where, thank you very much to Neely ma'am and Sudarshan and Sujda ma'am that they had just given the hand and uh, I'm trying to swim in this ocean. The next thing is that I want to tell you uh, the way the tools introduced in this all these weeks are very uh, supportive and very easily uh, uh, anyone can handle these tools. And uh, they all are online and interactive type. So it is a very nice experience to learn uh, with the learners. Means at the same time, we are also learning with all these participants, so many things. And secondly, the um, I have to mention all the uh, discussion of the weeks also, just now. No, 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 it's okay. No, you're fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. right. Thank you. Thank you, Ajita. Thank you so much. We'll get to that in a second. I don't think we're taking a bit too much time, but we'll try. Uh, there were 145 participants from 35 countries. Not all the participants were active for various reasons now with COVID, which makes life a lot more difficult to stay and finish uh, the courses. These were some of the reflections. And I think that my aha moments uh, are both connecting with the moderators, but learning, as Ajita mentioned, with the participants. We learn together, and there's so much learning going on. I'm going to um, share. I don't know if you'll be able to hear, because I'm not sure that I added audio, but let's try it anyways and see if you can hear. Just let me know if, um, if you're able to hear. I can't hear. No, we can't hear, but maybe you can share the, can you the, hear link, now? the link in the chat. No. You still can't? Okay. No, no, no problem. 
Okay. The uh, uh, Jita or any someone who has uh, Jita or anyone else, um, maybe Sudarshana, can you share the link in the uh, in the okay. chat of the video? Not just that of the uh, PowerPoint presentation of the Google uh, Doc, so that uh, we have that. And I'm going to uh, do something else here. I'm going to share the computer sound so you could hear it. Here Overall, I found this course to be extremely enjoyed learning about language learning apps like Duolingo can you hear and that? how to implement them in the classroom. I yes. found this course yes, to be engaging can. and utilize tools to promote creativity in the classroom like Toontastic and Vokey. Some challenges I experienced included some technological interruptions like loss of connection or the application not being compatible with my computer software. So benefits of this course included learning about others' experience with the task, like through the discussion post forums. I enjoyed watching others' use of tools like Quizlet and Flipgrid and how they interpreted and interacted with each application. Overall, I found this course to be extremely helpful and I'm looking forward to utilizing it in my classroom. The largest benefit for me is that I am kind of love technology now. Even though I have met so many unexpected obstacles and hard to manage my time, I am still obsessed with this course. I have learned so many different applications which are used to help teachers and students to learn a language better and find enjoyment in study. There are some challenges for me as a second language learner, download and study the applications, learn the course and write a reflection. Time, actually, this is becoming a vicious circle when I missed the first week online class due to the attending conference in Mississippi. So I have to watch the recording class rather than take the live class, except for the last week. But, I am thankful for the extension of this course so I can finish all the tasks and get a certificate in the end. Hello everyone, this course was very very useful for me. I learned to use Voki, VoiceThread, Toontastic, Read Aloud and Loom. Also, I liked to participate in discussions and listen to other participants of this course, how they use Screencast-O-Matic or Padlet. Uh, also, I think that this course is very, very helpful to uh, learn about how to structure the course itself and uh, different tasks were, were easy. Uh, in the future, I think that I will implement these um, technologies to teach my students uh, to speak English uh, much more engaged and uh, in an enthusiastic way. Hello, I'd like to thank Nelly for her hard work and kindness. Well, for the benefits and challenges of this course, I find it effective and challenging. I learned and tried out new apps and boards. I like Vokey for young learners, Toontastic for creativity and Screencast-O-Matic for presentation, the design of the course, the support of Nelly as a motivator in the discussion forum for sharing participants' ideas, we learned from each other. I faced some challenges such as time management, time to complete tasks, read other participants' work, try out the new apps and boards and reflect on them. I also had some technical issues such as bassy voice when recording, so I had to record many times. Another problem I had was Toontastic to have a link between the voice and movements but it was a great experience. I think participants' knowledge and skills are improved, not the same thanks Nelly. Benefits and challenges of the EVO uh, technology for speaking. Well, uh, there are many benefits because of course uh, we have have many different tools to learn and experiment with and then put into practice in our class, some of which I knew, some I did not. All of them have been very interesting. I've learned to use what I knew um, already much better and I've experimented with many things I never even heard about. Some are more challenging to work out what to do and of course they don't all work on a particular device. They're designed for different kinds of devices. It's very interesting to try them out and compare them. I think a lot of these tools will be very useful in the classroom. Some of the sites for speaking and reading, for example, uh, things like Hello, uh, English Conversation, things like that, and of course Padlet. 
as a curation board. It's very exciting to look at. And of course, you can put video as well as recording images and text on that. So it's great both for the teacher and for a student. And of course, creating videos is very interesting of the computer, so of the computer screen. Very helpful for teaching online courses. The biggest challenge is fitting it all in in the time. All in all, though, great. Some of the challenges of the five-week course for me were the time involved, especially going through all those apps. I'm trying them, evaluating them, and deciding if or how I could use them. Okay, I'm going to um, stop with that and get back to our presentation. Um, I think it's worthwhile listening to um, the reflections. What I really, really liked was the fact that they were able to reflect. Um, it's amazing that if you have reflections on a regular basis after each of the tools, participants learn and value. And I think that the last uh, person that was going to speak uh, mentioned that, that he's going to uh, continue reflecting. And I think that's, um, uh, you know, something that I would take away as a moderator, the fact that, you know, teachers were not just learning about the tools, but they were learning uh, strategies for themselves, how to improve things and how they learn and how they manage their classes. Uh, the learning strategies that were used were peer learning. They were teaching each other. They were reflecting comparing the different tools and responding to each other. So it was a uh, learning together. They were also discovering, as was mentioned, they were reviewing the tools and they were reflecting on how they would use the tools uh, with their students. And of course, they also showcased on a curation board and reflected on the process. Nine participants <laughs> of all the 145 completed all the activities. So they were able to see, since this was on a Moodle LMS learning management system, they were able to see their progress. As you can see, the uh, light blue is what's uh, complete. And uh, the royal blue is what needs to be completed. In this case, it's 28%. These um, were the tools for each week. The first week uh, was just getting to know um, one another. So week one, they introduced themselves on a map using Padlet and VoiceThread to get them talking and, of course, using Vokey as well. Week two, they used various tools and then they um, shared the tools through Vokey and reflected uh, through um, Quizlet by using some of the terms um, that came up. And they also played a match game through Quizlet. Week three, they recorded their audio and that's how they reflected. And week four, they um, reflected using read aloud and curation walls. And in week five, they used screen recorders, curation walls, and they reflected. So week two uh, was led by um, Sudarshana. Week three was led by Ajita and week four was led by Sushita. So can you um, maybe talk a little bit about some of the tools? These are the list of tools and what you thought of them. Yes, uh, week two was one minute. moderated by me. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yes. Week two was moderated by me, and uh, I have uh, we have introduced seven tools in the in this week. Uh, that way, Awabe Bilingo, uh, Learn English, and Audio Video, Usud Bilingo, English Speaking Practice, and Hello English. All these tools are very useful for young learn young learners. And uh, one more important thing was uh, our teachers uh, can use these tools for their students. By the help of the regional languages, uh, they can get help of regional language. So all our participants have enjoyed all these tools uh, as per their uh, availability of tools on their mobile or iPhone. And uh, they have reflected by using Oki and uh, Quizlet. Uh, so uh, 
all participants have given their uh, good feedback and uh, hope they have enjoyed all these uh, tools and one more thing i want to add here uh, after every week participants were getting their uh, badges and uh, as our uh, session has uh, no grading or no marks so uh, participants have no burden of marks or grading and hence they enjoyed the session very much thank you Okay, I don't know if we have time. Um, half a minute, um, Ajita, for week three. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have uh, the moderator for the week three. And uh, you know, in this week three, we, are, we can see uh, there are eight tools we have introduced in this week three. Uh, all these tools are very handy and very simple to use. So it can be easily handled by the students also uh, and the teachers also, and also for useful for the parents too. Then next to that is, um, uh, these all tools are very helpful for achieving the vocabulary and also enriching the grammatical uh, uh, constructions also, which is more useful for the students for the speaking skill, for their fluency and accuracy. Secondly, with the help of recorded videos, uh, recorded audios, we can enrich our uh, grammar also. Uh, and um, another main important thing for the week three is the homework of this week, uh, which was a very innovative type like uh, recording and audio. So uh, recording and audio of the feedbacks from the participants. With these audios, we can have everyone's view about uh, every single tool uh, which we have introduced in this week. And it was very interesting to listen everyone anytime and uh, as per our wish. And finally, I want uh, to mention that, uh, please uh, mention this uh, to Mrs. Nelly ma'am, Mrs. Sujita ma'am and Mrs. Susan Sudarshana ma'am for helping me to develop my can-do spirit. Means I was just lagging behind, but uh, these three pe uh, people are just uh, taking me uh, uh, with them. Um, and uh, thank you so much for being me, uh, making me the part of EVO. And uh, thank you, P4AC and EVO. And lastly, one the very important thing I want to mention here, uh, I won't forget this, which I learned from everyone here is to just go on and on and on. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ashita. Sushita? Yeah, so uh, I had been a lot in week four and uh, there were three apps, but the three apps were so very much interesting. Fantastic, uh, um, like they can create their own story over here and they can select their uh, uh, characters, music, dialogue, and they can move their uh, characters, it was interesting because uh, in the storyboard uh, that the next app, here we can select the character, we can select this um, scenario, but we can't move the character. So fantastic, I think was the best and uh, has been uh, favored by all the participants. Storyboard that was also good and it's user friendly. Uh, the most interesting uh, of these three is read aloud because it had given an ample of chances to listen to good English and to practice. Uh, shadowing the voices and uh, apart from that uh, having uh, the ample of chances to record yourself and listen to yourself so I think the Tuntastic and storyboard that and read aloud are in a hierarchical manner which gives the participants a fulfillment and a, a sense of achievement uh, these Thank three you. apps could be used for various purposes uh, just one sentence to <laughs> such as uh, the last one is evaluation. I think the teachers can use them for the evaluation as well. Thank you. Yeah, the idea of course was uh, we all chose the, uh, the tools. The idea of course was for students of all ages to practice speaking on their phones. That was the idea. Uh, these are some of the uh, presentations that participants use to share um, what happened here to share their feedback? Uh, I think I lost something here, but all right. Um, okay. 
I see that we lost uh, some of our <laughs> slides, which is perfect. Uh, we wanted to share um, some of the badges and the final certificate, but that's that's fine. Um, so we don't have time for questions, but maybe we will at the end. And Nelly, uh, there was a question and uh, it was answered in the chat. Yes, I noticed. Yeah, okay. But I mean, for further questions, if you think okay, of anything. Okay, so yes. Um, okay. We're, we're going to go on to um, our next um, presentation. Okay, I don't know if I'm still screen sharing. All right. Yes, you and, are. And um, notice that we're, uh, again, the same uh, presenters same uh, facilitators, moderators, or whatever you want to call us. Um, we work together on a session called Developing Learning Habits. Now, this was, um, you know, it was almost like uh, giving birth, you know? It's like, first of all, you know, how do you, what do you do? How do you do it the first time, right? Um, we spend so much time just thinking about you know, we had ideas. Sushita, of course, came up with this idea, again, developing learning habits. She, she thought this would be great, but how do you do it? What do you do it? Where do you, you know, where do you start? So we uh, brainstormed and we came up with some ideas and then we changed our minds a million times before we finally had a, a course, so-called five-week session, course-like, where... Um, <laughs> we would do something. We based um, the content on personal competency framework, PCF. Um, we were gonna do a lot more, but we had to cut things down by Sam Redding. I highly recommend it. The link, it's all clickable. By the way, you can go into as a guest and see everything in the three uh, sessions that we're presenting today. And I hope somebody shared the or can share the uh, PowerPoint slides. So again, we're talking about the same participants. We had less, um, I think people were kind of scared. You know, it's, it is scary to take a session called developing learning habits. You know, it seems kind of dry and um, we try to not make it dry. So 81 participants joined, dared to join from 33 countries. And these are some of the countries you can see really uh, very diverse. Now, these are people, participants who had actually written where they were from in their profiles on Moodle in the session. Uh, there were others from other countries, but I just couldn't go through it all. Um, I just wanted you to hear uh, these two. Oh, we're going backwards. These just jumping. Somebody else mentioned today that things jump. Let me try to go back and fix it. No, it's jumping. Okay. All right, let's go into this one. Um, and please let me know if you can hear. Oops. Education too often focuses yes, on the delivery of cognitive content and leaves little scope for developing what's traditionally called study skills, a key factor for successful learning and goal attainment. It leaves even less for cell crucial to responsible and pro-social behaviors which are conducive to real learning. I enrolled for this promising session eager to learn about how to better help my students become effective lifelong learners. For five weeks, I've been learning about and reflecting on the elements of the learning process and what leads to the development of sound learning habits through videos, research papers, discussions with fellow participants and the creation of activities. I've come closer to grasping what's involved in developing personal competencies for better academic progress and character development. Every week became more interesting than the previous one, and I really couldn't tell which topic was the most rewarding to explore. I'm only sorry that I couldn't interact more with colleagues. However, I found the discussions with Dr. Nelly, who always responded to our comments, extremely satisfying. I also enjoyed exploring new tools apart from new topics. Collaboration on Amanote and on a variety of curation boards added value to this course. I'd like to thank fellow participants for their great Kahoot challenges and their comments. 
and the moderators of the session for designing such a captivating course and supporting us so consistently throughout these five weeks. Till next EVO 2023. Very, very interesting and fun. Found this course with Dr. Nelly very, very interesting and worth trying. At the very beginning, I was a little lost, but soon after, I got used to it. The tasks became clearer and more familiar because it was very well organized. It provided us prompts for reflections all the time and every week had its new challenge. I had the feeling that I was putting into practice the very same process of acquiring, developing learning habits. And now I, be I became more aware of the internal processes of us as learners. I really did a lot of thinking. I was guided by Dr. Melly and moderators every step of the way. I felt very com comfortable and contained during this process. I am really lucky to have the opportunity to learn from and with great colleagues all over the world. Although it was hard work, I developed a consistent number of specific learning repertoires and also a really good sense of self-worth. Worth. We are all long life learners and this course taught me to become a more effective one and gave me the opportunity to teach that to my students as well. It is like a new door has opened for me. Right. Um, again, because they practiced uh, reflecting, there is more here, but we're going to skip that. Just to show you a little bit of how complicated, yet uh, we made it fun. In other words, they didn't really feel that they were, you know, into deep learning, even though they were. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is the personal competency-based learning. And this is what each of the participants know really, really well. So first of all, they read lots of articles using Aminote. Aminote is a collaborative note-taking tool it's available on the Moodle as well as off Moodle. So if you're interested, it's completely free. It's called Ammon Note. It's a great way to learn the material in an interesting way because you can draw and you can annotate um, and learn with others. Um, the forum discussions also opened up lots of discussions and opportunities to uh, discuss the various um, tools and ideas. When I say tools, I mean the Kahoot, for example, they had to create 44 uh, Kahoot, well, actually not 44, uh, 10 Kahoot questions for each week. That's 40 Kahoot questions uh, relating to the content that they learned. In other words, they were testing each other. But as you know, when you create a test, you're actually learning the material and that's how they learned the material through uh, creating quizzes kahoot questions they then played each other's cahoots so that the information uh, became even more familiar they did this with kahoot challenges so it wasn't a live kahoot but a kahoot assignment um, in addition they also created for each week we provided them with 44 glossary terms that they would need to know and they created 11 terms definitions with the term and the definitions using quizlet they then played their own quizlet games first they had to learn the terms remember them and then play match games and then they had to share how fast they did it so everybody was trying to do it faster than everybody else. So they were playing their own Kahoot, their own uh, Quizlet matches, as well as everybody else's and trying to be number one or beat someone else's uh, speed in matching. They also uh, created Google Docs that we provided the templates for, for each of the uh, learning terms um, for, um, each week. 
they had to come up with ideas on how they would use it. I think I'm going backwards. All right, so this is um, the personal competency. Am I going the wrong way? Something is weird here. Okay, here we are. The glossary of terms, as I said, the glossary of terms uh, were available for them to use for their Quizlet. And this is the personal learning plan that they uh, would create for each week. One for the cognitive personal competency, they would have to describe the competency and then uh, describe an activity that they would use or activity they would use in their classes. And then metacognition, motivational and social and emotional. Um, if you're interested, I'm not gonna go through this, but because we don't have time, but uh, you'll have a chance to view the um, presentation. I hope somebody added in the chat box and go through the uh, each of these components, metacognitive and motivation, as well as the uh, social and emotional competency. Now, it may look very complicated, but trust me, with the tools, with technology, um, learning can be fun. And I think that's the point, that you can learn and gain a lot of information and have fun doing it. And then the information is sustained and you can implement it. These are some of the uh, curation boards and video recorders. They also created uh, videos um, showcasing what they did. There's also, there are a few feedbacks here. These are the badges for weeks one to five. As Sudarshana mentioned, they had to complete the task and then they got a hundred. But it's either you do it all or it's not done. And that's the uh, final certificate. These are some of the references, wonderful references, by the way. And we're ready for questions. I don't know if we have time, but is there a question, Sonia? No, there are no questions in the chat. Please, if okay. you have a question. So Nelly, I was wondering if you can add the link because yes. I'm not sure it has been added uh, to the chat, oh, the link to the slides. I'm screen sharing. Oh, okay. Um, so maybe one of the but Sudarshana, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sudarshana, can you get the link to both uh, presentations? All right. So we can okay. go on to the final session. All right with mindfulness awareness. Now we're going yes. somewhere else. We're yes. going into another realm. And, and we're going to change well, the continuation. Uh, the link is in the chat. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, great. For both of them? There is one link in the, the chat, chat for, for so the Shana, Do you have another link? For both sessions. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. And by the way, um, on the uh, presentations, you'll have the link to go into the sessions. They're open. You can go in as a guest and uh, see what's there. Brilliant. Thank you. All right. All right. So uh, mindfulness awareness practice. Uh, I've been doing mindfulness for, um, I guess, over 30 years. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's not that difficult. Anybody can do it. Uh, it just needs um, your executive, I guess, uh, decision-making. You just have to decide that it's something you wanna do. In the uh, session, participants learn about and develop a mindfulness awareness practice. Many did. Uh, the link is here. The PowerPoint, Sonia, you can share that, the presentation. The link is here to go into the... Uh... Sonia was one of the moderators. Let me know when you, if you can add it, if you find it, to add it to the chat box. Sonia is an EFL teacher with 31 years of experience with teacher training trainer, a curriculum developer, materials writer, Microsoft certified educator. Her interests include inclusive education, the use of learning technologies, materials, writing. Uh, she's also a volunteer in the field of professional development, and she's on the coordinating team on EVO 
coordinating. Thank you, Nelly. And I'm a beginner <laughs> in the field of mindfulness and very thankful to you to introducing me to this world. All right. So I'm looking forward to others joining us next year, hopefully. Um, there's no, I mean, homework is not part. Of, well, you do homework on yourself, but there's not a lot of uh, work. Uh, our second uh, moderator is Maha, uh, who's all, an experienced, actually, mindfulness uh, awareness practitioner. She's been doing it for a number of years. I don't know if she's here today. Um, let me continue. So we had 58 because uh, apparently we don't have time for ourselves, or at least uh, we claim that we don't have time. But actually, mindfulness gives us or uh, allows us to uh, learn how to have more time. You, you, you make more use of your time, better use of your time. Uh, and there are a lot of benefits to mindfulness. We had 58 from 24 countries and only five completed. Uh, this is um, actually, I don't know, maybe I should just go through one. I know we don't have much time. My favorite techniques among the mindfulness free RSUC website are three minute breathing space, four minutes body scan, and tension release meditation. I prefer short practices because I'm at the beginning. I'm also exploring short practices to propose in my classroom sometimes. My favorite is the tension release meditation, but all these techniques can help to reach mindfulness. Hi, I'm Renu. Today I am going to share with you three mindfulness techniques. The first technique is to find with fish in aquarium, feel self, self-worth, freedom, zeal in life. Another technique is find self in circle, increases concentration. Third technique is plants interact with plants, talk with them, feel them and find soul with them, release your strain. Hello. I was a bit hesitant about taking part in a course because I signed up in the past but never managed to complete any courses. I usually signed up for two courses, which was not a good idea, especially at the beginning. What I did this time was I signed up for one and devoted hours trying to understand the concept. The most difficult part was finding time to complete the tasks. Nothing is impossible though. Trying to stick to mindfulness was also a challenge because you have to remember to do so when stressed. Taking part in this course and doing research, going through the content in this course helped me remind myself to do it. I actually saw the benefits for seconds during the day. The more I worked on the task, the more I practiced mindfulness. Mindfulness can change people's lives. I think it is very useful in the classroom and should be practiced often. Thank you all for your comments, help, and support. I appreciate it. All right. I took this oh, course as more. part of Sorry. my Auburn University course. I am a current classroom teacher, but I'm getting my major in ESL. And this course, I felt like something that was difficult for me was navigating Moodle just in general. I've never used Moodle, and Moodle was a very difficult, not very user-friendly um, platform. But what was useful for me was learning how to use these different tools. And I've been working on how to integrate those with ESL students and how they can be beneficial and just different things like that. So I think that that's also been a really fun, exciting piece of the course. The coursework has not been overwhelming. There was a lot of reading, but I feel like I've kept up really, really well. Um, overall, I think that I've learned a lot from this course and look forward to implementing it within my classroom structure. I think designing and developing a course collaboratively is a difficult challenge, but collaboration increases motivation and learning in a meaningful way. I enjoyed a lot this course and I would like to thank you all. I think the hardest challenge was to deal with some web tools I didn't know. I also had some problems with Voki at the beginning, but I think it's amazing. I was scared and about doing and recording a practice with an unknown course mate, but it was the most enjoyable activity and a very important experience to me. I started to practice more mindfulness, it's an important improvement in my quality of life. So I would like to share some of these experiences with my family and students. Right, okay, uh, let me go back if I can. 
Amazing. About doing and recording a practice. All right. Um, the tasks. Week one, uh, participants uh, did a bit of reading with Aminote, and they were exposed to some free resources. And they did journal writing. Now, journal writing is part of Moodle. It's a, an activity on Moodle. They had a diary for each, well, each day if they wanted or each week. So they kept, um, you know, um, sharing how they were doing, you know. Um, and then week two, uh, we talked about... Um, the reading and how we can change habits. How do you change habits? Uh, week three, uh, they did formal practice, which is different from um, everyday practice. And they learned about the differences. They also uh, created their own um, meetings. They paired up or in threes uh, with other participants and they created uh, a Zoom meeting where they gave a guided mindfulness practice. Now, they didn't only give a, a guided one, they also gave non-guided. So it's really interesting to watch because they recorded them and you could see how they were doing mindfulness and uh, they looked very, very peaceful. Week four, um, they continued working on the various techniques. You heard them mention various techniques uh, that they came up with and that they learned about. Week five was, of course, the feedback and showcase. What happens with mindfulness is that you're in charge when you decide to take up mindfulness. You learn about choosing uh, things that are beneficial and um, also looking at circumstances and not taking um, ideas and thoughts as real. You learn the difference between reality, what's real, what's in front of you, and of course the past is not and the future is not. So you learn to focus on the present and appreciate it for what it is. And this is um, a very pleasurable task to uh, focus on what's in front of you and not take your thoughts as realities. You learn to um, differentiate between commentaries, what your mind keeps telling you is happening and interpreting for you to what is actually there. And you do this by focusing on your body. Instead of focusing on your thoughts, you focus on your physical body. And you try to sense if you're sitting, you pay attention to uh, the chair and your weight on the chair, if you're standing to your weight on the floor or wherever you happen to be standing. What mindfulness does, and this has been researched, is it sharpens our thinking. And it's actually 10 minutes of mindfulness awareness practice has an effect and they've uh, found this on MRIs. It changes our brains. So Anyone who says that mindfulness doesn't work uh, hasn't done mindfulness because it is physical. You change your brain. Your brain is plastic, as we all know from neuroscience, and um, it changes. What happens as a result of uh, mindfulness awareness practice is the following. Um, you learn to accept things. You don't have to be happy with them but you learn to face them and not resist because as they say, the more you resist something, the stronger it gets. The more you focus on say positive things and not negative things, um, your life changes because when you, when you focus on one positive, one negative thing, it just brings out other negative things right away. So our minds have a way of uh, tricking us into resisting things that are actually beneficial. So you don't resist your situation. You look at it for what it is. You don't try to make your thoughts go away by saying things like, go away, I don't wanna think that, bad thoughts, go away. You can't do that because thoughts aren't tangible. 
they're only uh, thoughts. They're not real. So you practice mindfulness by bringing your uh, thoughts back to reality, which is your physical body. That's, that's the only real thing that you can latch on to not your thoughts, because they're really not real. And to get that, you only get it by practicing mindfulness. And these are some of the benefits of mindfulness, and these have all been documented. How do you do it? Well, you can do it right now as you're sitting. You sit for formal mindfulness. You don't have to close your eyes. That's a myth about uh, mindfulness, your eyes should actually be open because otherwise the mind will think that in order to resolve issues and face reality, you have to close your eyes and you don't because mindfulness is practice all the time, especially of course, when you're stressed, but you can practice it all the time. You don't have to be stressed. So with your eyes open, you focus you lower your chin so that your back is more or less straight as you're sitting. And you try to feel your body or your sense of body. And then thoughts come in. The minute thoughts come in, you bring yourself back to the sense of your body. That's how easy it is. And then the next stage, of course, is to pay attention to your breathing. Uh, you can do this while you're walking, while you're washing the dishes. I love washing the dishes now. Didn't before mindfulness, but now I love it because it's really a wonderful chance to feel the water, to, I mean, not to put them in the dishwasher, but to actually uh, use the sink and wash the dishes. You can also do mindfulness while you're talking to someone. And while you're doing casual work or disagreeing, because what you're doing when you are mindful, you're just watching, observing, and you're not adding comments in your head. In other words, you're not saying, this is good, this is bad, I like this, I don't like this. Do you know how much time we spend commenting on what we see? So instead of uh, commenting, you just focus on the object or whatever you're doing on the activity. And when thoughts come in, you just go back to the activity. And that's how they kind of disappear because they're not real. Uh, these are some of the uh, badges for uh, the participants who completed each week the certificate. And these are the presentation slides that we used and some of the uh, references. Now I think I have, we've got a bit of time, right? So um, we have time for questions about anything that we've said so far. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Nelly. Your presentation was really inspiring. Very fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, next year we're going to have to do these for 90, I think 90. There is oh. a question in the chat. How much of the readings yes. did the participants have to read? Uh, they didn't have to read any of the readings. It wasn't a requirement. It was just a, um, a suggestion. Uh, it wasn't part of, the, um, of their progress. In other words, they didn't have to read. It was an option. What they had to do were the um, the practice. Well, not had to. They had to try to do the practice and then um, reflect and keep a journal. Any other questions? I think that maybe we can stop screen sharing and get everybody there. On the camera we and see everyone. Them and let everyone else, so we can also get a photo. Yes. Uh, let's start, give everyone a chance to start their videos. They can also, I don't know how many people are here, they can also unmute themselves and ask questions. 22. Um, if they'd like. 
So hi, now we can see each other. Wonderful. Yes. So uh, what do you think of um, mindfulness? Any? Hi there, Kim. Yes, Jonathan. Are you ready to do it? You see Adam there. I don't see anyone from the sessions. So actually, again, uh, if you're interested in mindfulness and you're sitting right now, and I presume everybody's sitting, just uh, keep your eyes open. Just let them go somewhere, and just feel the your chair. No music, you don't need anything, no prompts, that's all. So how did anybody try it? I know I tried it and felt good. Anyone try it? You gotta give it a chance. Nelly, we have a comment or a question in the chat. Yes, Do you want to please. check that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so. Yes. Uh, this comes from Anne. So Anne is saying, isn't there value in thoughts? We often need to solve problems and thoughts allow us to brainstorm. Great question. Thoughts are great. As long as you don't take the comments about thoughts as real. In other words, let's say you have an idea. That's perfect. But what comes with the idea, Anne? Let's say you want to go for a walk. Okay, and you think, oh, I don't know, any idea that you have. And then the comments start. I don't have time. Should I go for one? Should I not go for one? You know, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the comments uh, to the ideas, to the thoughts. Well, let me pose Again, another. Yeah, I, yes. I'm sorry. As I said in my first post that I just, I've been, balancing between two activities during this time frame. So I came to this session late. I also wasn't sure how to find it. I'm having a real hard time negotiating the virtual aspects of my participation. So I, it took me a lot of layers to find you. Um, so I may be asking a question that is completely out of the context of what you've been discussing. So I apologize for that from the, um, uh, as, as a, caveat. I would say that I'm challenged in, say, my business model. And I like to do some free floating thinking where I just stand back from pushing at it, and I let ideas come. And then I need to let them kind of um, play and I need to evaluate them. This would be workable. This one wouldn't for financial reasons or logistical reasons or whatever. So I need to play with a lot of thoughts. And so I may be commenting in your terms about the thoughts, but it's really an evaluation exercise to distill from those thoughts what could actually be practical, what could be achieving a result that I need, like to monetize a service that I'm usually giving away for free, but that really doesn't serve me. It doesn't honor my skills, my offering to a client. So I, I need to do a lot of kinds of thinking. And so the comments on the thinking, I'm not sure if, if I'm using no, it correctly, yeah. but the comments on my thinking are part of my evaluation of having a brainstorming session with myself. No, the, the idea, no, you're, you're, if you're thinking clearly about things and you're not, well, not clearly, it doesn't have to be clear, but if you're not saying things like, um, no, 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 I shouldn't think that. No, that's bad. I'm talking about uh, taking your thoughts as, uh, as causing something to happen. You're talking about, um, you know, ideas. They're not really... Uh, thoughts about thoughts. 
You're just mm-hmm. thinking about ideas, but thoughts about thoughts. In other words, um, you know, as I said about the walking or about the money, should I spend money? No, if we spend money, we'll suffer, we'll have problems. I mean, where, where you know, where are the thoughts going? Um, are they thoughts that you can use? Or are they thoughts that are kind of pulling you down and making you feel really, really bad about, you know, the thoughts? That, that's the idea. And we do this all the time. You know, you're talking about um, very, very fruitful mm-hmm. ideas where you brainstorm. Brainstorming is great. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you don't hit yourself on the head when you don't like some idea and you say, no, 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 that's not good. I shouldn't be thinking that, you know, let's, no, 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 that's, uh, and, and, and you're doing it in a very negative way to yourself. In other words, you're not, you're not respecting um, yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, being kind to yourself uh, right through the process. But you're asking great questions. That's how you do it. Um, I really suggest that you try mindfulness. Uh, there are lots of um, uh, videos online that are free and lots of resources that you can get. And if you go into this particular course, the link there to the course, you'll, the course session, Evo session, you'll be able to get some resources there as well. It's open, so you can just go in as a guest and uh, grab whatever is there. But I'd love to hear more um, because that's what it's about. It's It's about doing it and then you know and then the questions come and the questions will be slightly different after the experience i really appreciate that thank you Anne. anyone else thank you nelly for the presentation i think uh, the time's up we we should be all right so thank you everyone (laughs) we went really fast like i was on a roller coaster but thank you thank you everyone for being here thank you Thank you. Thank you.